Welcome to the Dream It Dose. We see a lot of startups doing their angel, pre-seed, and seed rounds as convertible notes and safes. When we ask what type of terms they're looking for, including the cap, many struggle with how best to answer. It's important to know the ins and outs of getting this right. Let's dive in. Dream It Ventures has been investing in great early stage startups for over a decade. The Dream It Dose allows us to share best practices to help even more founders. Tell us about your great startup using the links below. Before we can start talking about how to set the terms, including cap, let's quickly review some definitions related to convertible notes and safes. First, of course, there's how much you're raising. By the way, for help in figuring out how much you should raise, check out our Dream It Dose on the topic. But for now, let's say you're raising somewhere between $300,000 and $3 million. Typically, at the really early stages, instead of a priced equity round, most startups will raise their first round using a convertible note or safe, simple agreement for future equity. Both notes and safes are fairly easy instruments to put together. They both kind of defer the valuation discussion, and investors can lock in an investment more easily at an earlier stage in price. More on that later. Next up, a convertible note is a loan that typically converts into shares of preferred stock during your next equity financing. Convertible notes are debt financing and have an interest rate and maturity date just like the loan on your house or car. A safe is not debt financing, so does not have an interest rate nor a maturity date. Convertible notes and safes can both be structured with a discount that rewards early investors for taking a really big risk. The discount gives them the right to convert their investment at a reduced price to what's paid by the next round's equity investors. So you're saying to your really early investors, hey, our equity is on sale and you should get in early at a discount. For example, if the price per share of your next round comes in at a dollar, with a 20% discount, early investors will buy their shares for 80 cents each. In essence, early investors' cash will buy more shares when and if the next round occurs. If this is a convertible note, as we mentioned, there's an interest rate on that note. Typical interest rates are 2 to 8%, and that interest rate is paid during the future note conversion. One other big item for notes is the maturity date, which is the date the note is due and payable if it is not already converted. Okay, so we've gotten the basic definitions out of the way. Now let's start hitting what investors are usually most interested in hearing about, your cap. You're talking to investors about your convertible note or safe and haven't addressed the cap, and suddenly it's like where's the old the Wendy's beef? commercial, but instead of where's the beef, it's where's the cap, or what is the cap? First, let's make sure you understand what cap means. The conversion valuation cap, or cap, is a mechanism that can be used to reward early investors for the risk they take and hopefully efforts they make to help increase the value of your startup. You know, the classic, we're more than just money. The cap places a ceiling on the startup's value in the next round. So if you go past the cap in your next round, your initial investors get to purchase at a lower price. They're protected by the cap and compensated for taking early risk. At this point, you may be falling into a very common misunderstanding regarding the interplay, or lack thereof, between the discount and the cap. So keep this in mind. The discount is a percentage off in the next round, while the cap places a maximum ceiling on the valuation of the next round. When that next round occurs, early investors do not get both a discount and extra shares if the cap is exceeded. It's one or the other, not both. We hear founders say, I did a safe and investors get a 20% discount and a $7 million cap. They think their early investors will get both. That's not the way it works. The way most safes and notes are structured, the price per share your early investors will get in the next round is determined by whichever mechanism yields a lower price per share, the discount or the cap. So let's go deeper into the cap and talk about uncapped safes and notes. Let me share a simple way I think about uncapped notes for 95% of cases. Early investors want to take risk and help startups, but they need to show strong overall returns. So if the value of a startup they make an initial investment into later starts to run away with an extremely high valuation, that will water down their investment if there is no cap. Therefore, many, okay, most sophisticated investors won't put themselves into a situation to take the risk of an uncapped investment. Instead, they'll just take a wait and see approach until the next price round. And if things are going well, the valuation makes sense to them, and they're still in love with the company, They'll buy in, foregoing the discount. Here's another way of looking at a discount with no cap. If, for example, I'm putting in $500,000 in an early uncapped round with a 20% discount, no matter what, I'm roughly getting an extra $100,000 of equity in that next round. 
But as the valuation goes up, my $600,000 total is buying less and less of the company. 600,000 into 10 million, 600,000 into 20 million, 600,000 into 50 million. The sky's the limit if there's no cap. As a founder, you may be thinking, yep, seems fair to me. But here's the problem. Sophisticated investors will argue, up to you if you agree, that an uncapped note or safe misaligns founder and investor interests. Why? Because the lack of a cap waters down their investment, therefore penalizing early investors for helping a startup increase its value. This misalignment makes sense, right? Founders want their next round valuation to be as high as possible so they don't dilute their ownership. On the other hand, early note and safe investors want the next round to be as low as possible so they get the largest percentage of the company they can for their investment. An elegant and relatively simple solution is to cap the valuation to which the safe or note convert. As long as the next round is priced higher than the cap, both founders and seed investors are aligned and want the valuation as high as possible. Okay, so let's address how you can actually set the cap. First, let's quickly cover why early startups do notes and safes in the first place and a common misconception. Most founders know that notes and safes are faster, easier, and think they defer the valuation discussion. You have an idea, a super early product, and no real or very light traction. And you feel it's hard to figure out what your startup is really worth. So if you don't know what your startup is worth, where does your valuation cap come from? The cap is often a negotiated estimate of existing company value and is based, most importantly, on what investors and the startup are willing to agree to. So your cap is actually set at fair market value. So there really is no full deferral of the valuation discussion when using a cap. So I keep saying, put a cap on it, but are there times a cap may legitimately not apply? There are three distinct situations I've seen when uncapped notes may come into play. The first instance, serial entrepreneurs with incredibly strong previous successes are raising around. Investors are worried about getting money into the company. The founders offer a 10 to 20% discount and no cap. Investors are willing to put money in with no cap because they're trying to get a foot in the door. Since there's a FOMO and incredibly strong demand, these particular founders can largely dictate terms that include no cap. The next instance where you may be able to do an uncapped note is when you've already raised, things are going fairly well, and you need just a bit more runway to get your next equity round closed. So you do a small convertible note bridge round with existing investors and do that with a discount, but without a cap. Why no cap? You don't want a cap to unduly influence the next round's valuation, which may be in just a few months. So insider investors may forego the cap in this type of small bridge. The last instance where I see an early round done with no cap is with unsophisticated angel investors or a friends and family round. You offer a note or safe with a 15 to 20% discount. Everyone's excited. They haven't done a lot of angel investing before, don't have a lot of experience with startups, and you may well be able to take their money and not give a cap. I'm not sure if this is the smartest money, but hey, it's money. A common tell that you're dealing with unsophisticated angel investors will be repeatedly being asked the same question of, hey, what's your exit strategy? Okay, that's it. Those are six key points to think about when structuring a convertible note or safe. First, make sure you're clear on the basic terms and the key items in convertible notes and safes. Second, make sure you understand what a cap is and the mechanisms of how it works. Third, make sure you understand the interplay between a discount and a cap. Fourth, be aware of challenges you may encounter when trying to do an uncapped note. Fifth, a cap won't defer the valuation discussion and is going to be based on what an investor will agree to, aka the fair market value. Finally, there are a few cases when a cap may not apply, but proceed cautiously here. That's it. That's your Dream It Dose in about 10 minutes. Please leave your questions in the comments section. If you found this video valuable, please like and subscribe. We have a lot more coming. To see all of our doses, go to dreamit.com slash dose. See you next time. Fluffing?
flip-flopping. So there really is no deferral of the valuation discussion when using a cap. Oh my God, was that horrible? It is a little bit slow. I could speed it up a little bit. Sophisticated investors will... The price per share your early investors will get is...